to back outscore in the fourth quarter, 25 to 14. Rob, how about this? Something you were saying right before we came on. 34 points in the second half for the Lakers. That's the lowest point total That's of low. the year. That's low. That's low. Uh, very low. But you know the thing about it is, I think, James, you and I had more energy and yeah. you know, James on fire segment than the Lakers had all night. And, Might and I he, say the James on fire segment the pregame years. show was <laughs> Emmy Award winner. Hell yeah, we could have gone out there. Might and, just roll know. that tonight. Oh, uh, we but. should. <laughs> it's, but you got to think about this. This is the one time bad cop Rob is not going to come out because God, they've, been on a, they've been on a road trip. And it's hard during COVID. You know, you get a kind of the stymie. You can't leave the hotel. You can't do anything. You know, just I can tell you a little laziness kind of creeps in. And you, and you can't help it because you're just stuck in this hotel and not doing anything. So they don't have that energy and that, that effort. And they're missing AD. So yeah. there's a lot of things going against them tonight. So, I'm, you know, bad cop Rob is not even mad tonight. Big yeah, game? There are two things. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's an embarrassing loss, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, two things. Every night is going to be a big night for whoever the Lakers are playing. Detroit, the worst record. But when the Lakers come to town, it's, it's, it's show and tell. It's time to show out on them. Also, you have to realize, regardless of Detroit's record, they are still professional NBA players. You know, they got here by being really good. It's just not working out as a team and individually. You know, guys like Wayne Ellison uh, tonight hitting threes. And and once they saw that the Lakers were going to let them hang around, yeah, that the, you know because I think most under underrated teams they wait for the big punch to knock them out. That never happened, and so Detroit felt like they could, you know, stay in the game. They thought they could win. Griffin hitting threes, you know, Plumley, you know, exercising his 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 talent out there. So uh, it's it's an ugly ugly loss, but I agree with Rob, man. This is an unusual season coming out of the bubble into something else kind of messy. And I just think subconsciously, they probably thought they were going to beat the Pistons. Resting AD, thought they could get away with it. But uh, Detroit showed up to play tonight, and the Lakers couldn't overcome. I mean, that was a – we know that's not the Lakers. 34 points in the second half. And it, yeah, and interestingly enough, in the fourth. big game, it was kind of the way for me that second quarter and The Lakers were up 57-50. It seemed to have some life. They are actually shooting a great percentage. They were shooting yeah. 60% from three, 9 of 15 at the time. And then missed a, missed a bunny, and, and Pistons went on a 6-0 run, and, and that game kind of changed in that last minute, and the Pistons came out on fire. And the Lakers, from that point on, only made two threes the rest of the game. I mean, Wayne Ellington and, and Blake Griffin had 11 threes between them. Yeah. Lakers, as a team, had 12. Um, and just the 34 points in the second half. You know, it's, it's interesting. It was 87-88 with 8 minutes and 40 seconds left in that fourth quarter. THD hit a three. The Lakers didn't score again for what seemed like two hours. I know. It was seven minutes. And in that time, the Pistons went on a 14-0 run. And I think we're just used to LeBron doing what he does every single fourth quarter. He only had two points in the second half. He had zero in the fourth. You know, the thing about it is we realize. It's got to be other people. Yeah, yeah, LeBron is human. And sometimes when you have nights like this, James said it earlier. You got to go to that bench. You got THT who can come with some energy. You got Trez. You got all these guys that can come with some energy because your big dog, LeBron, has more years. He, pretty much he has more playoff games than anybody on that team has games. So mm -hmm. you got to say, he's going to have those nights where he just didn't have it or <clears> just doesn't have it. And you have to go to the bench. You can't be afraid. As a coach, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be in this position because how do you tell one of the best players ever played this game, go sit down? It's hard because, you know, he has a competitive spirit. He wants to be out there. But sometimes you, you got to go to your, the other guys. Those guys can come with it and bring a little yeah. energy and rest a little more. So I think this is one of those nights where you really needed your bench. But I think it's hard as a coach. Like, when do you think that time is, right? I mean, LeBron's been so good in the fourth quarters. You're not. You're starting him in the fourth, right? You got to roll the dice. You got 14 man. in the first quarter. <laughs> you got to uh, roll the dice and say, okay, LeBron, yeah. what do you think? Well, what about THT? And, and, and we saw Kuz tonight get the start for AD, and he had 22. We talk a lot about Kuz when he does get the start and he gets the shot attempts. Last night it's four. Tonight it's 17. He ends up with 22 points. It's, it's simple math, right? Uh, THT getting some run. James, I, I'm telling you, man, it, you watch this kid play, and I know we've talked a lot about it. He's got something, and everyone knows it. And he's 20 years old. He is knocking on the door for more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Someone in that rotation tonight ahead of him the, better be looking. Tonight would have been the night I would have played him 30 plus. Yeah, he had that energy you know, going tonight. My college coach, and I don't know if Rob's did it, but every now and then when the starters weren't 
weren't playing well. He took the whole starting five out and put in a blue team, what he called a blue team. But he just let them play for three or four minutes, you know, pass the ball, play hard defense. Then he let the guys go back in. So I agree with that, that, the, the, that yeah. he should go to the bench. Uh, but Tucker, you know, it's going to be hard not to play him uh, because he really does come in the game, and he's a game changer because he can score, uh, he can defend, he can knock down the three. So, yeah, uh, he's a player that's, you know, I don't, I'm don't. i sure he's getting it done in practice yeah. when they get to practice, but he's the man of minutes. You know, he, he reminds me of, he's, he reminds me of this guy I played with back in 98, 99. He had all this energy, but Dale Harris was, Dale Harris was holding him back. And he just, when he got that, he was just putting up numbers. Talking about Kobe Bryant. And I'm not saying he is going to be Kobe Bryant, he's, but he reminds me of this guy that, that's young, has a lot of talent, but the coaches are seemingly holding him back. But when they do let him out, he does these extraordinary things, and he goes out and plays extremely well. So, and I know it's hard because you're looking down that line, like, who, whose minutes does he take? Yeah. It's, you know, he, West. what do you do? Yeah, that, but you got to, I think you just got to sometimes let the young fella go out there and play and, and let him learn because if you really think about it, he's not making any mistakes. Yeah. He's going to the hole, he's scoring easily, he's getting to the free throw line, and there's nothing he's doing wrong but being young. That's yeah. the only thing. Yeah, and listen, on a regular night, Frank's got decisions. There's 11 guys yeah. that he can play. He's, yeah. doing a, he's doing a great job of getting everyone in. It's, it's yeah. hard, It's man. hard, He's got to recognize, you know, I think, you know, a, a coach's job is hard. You know, yeah. if a guy's in a slump, you want to allow him to, to get out of it. But I, I thought, like, tonight, like, Pope was not there mentally. He was frustrated. He had that, that file, that flagrant file. He wasn't getting the calls that he thought he could get, and he got frustrated. That would have been a time I would have said, look, Tucker, go get him, make something happen, give him some minutes. You got to it's, – it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. But you got to – you know, I saw that Pope wasn't really, you know, himself. And so I, I, it's, it's hard. But Tucker's got to play. He's one of those players – that's on the bench that you can't say he's young. We got him in development stage. No, he's ready now. He's yeah. ready. I always appreciate uh, LeBron's ability to play every single night. Uh, his his minutes the last three nights, 39, 38, 36. It's a lot. He was playing 29, 30. It's a lot of minutes. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's a lot of minutes. And that's where your bench has to come through. You have and Other it, players got to pick up the score. Yeah, and plus, be LeBron you also, as a coach, you, you have someone sitting there and telling you the minutes. And yeah. you have to be big enough to go LeBron says, dude, you over your limit. Go sit yeah. down. And th th that's important. I think LeBron also has to understand that. It's the, it's, it's the journey, not the sprint they're doing right now. I, I want to ask you guys this before we get to the highlights. Something that was just glaring tonight. There's no AD, right? So we talk about the lack of rim protection. Only one block tonight. Only two steals tonight. And, and when you're a Pistons team and you see no AD and you see what the Lakers are, the size, you, you attack. Yeah, totally affected them on, on both yeah, ends both of the ends. court. Yeah. Uh, on defense, they had no fear. I mean, Marcus Saul is not a, a shot blocker, neither is Trez. We had no uh, shot blockers tonight. So they felt very comfortable on the defensive end uh, going to the cup. On the offensive end, we didn't have that, that extra distraction that would collapse the defense and we could get, you know, better shots. I don't think we got, you know, uh, the shots that we normally get, the open threes, the uncontested threes. We missed a lot of bunnies, too, inside. Yeah, I think, we did. I think Trez was trying to force the issue, get fouls. So we missed him on both ends, but I don't think that's the reason they lost, but they did miss his, yeah, uh, his, his right? effective. It's all that stuff. And, and by the way, that was with a couple minutes left. They did get a couple of late blocks, so they ended up with three, but game was already out of hand. All right, let's get you to the highlights. For three from three on 13 points. Let's head back to the Motor City. Lakers head coach Frank Vogel speaking with Mike in the media via Zoom. Hey, Frank, what did you see most of all in that second half? Uh, it's, I think, 34 points and just seemed like you ran out of gas. What was what stood out to you? Yeah, I don't know if we ran out of gas. I mean, we just we just didn't have a great rhythm that second half um, in any way. You know, I mean, I, we'll go back and look at the tape and you know, see where we went wrong. We just we didn't have the, as much of a defensive disposition, and, you know, that forced us to uh, – you know, not not get out in in, uh, in the open court, and you know, playing without Anthony, uh, we're just looking to find a you know a rhythm with combinations that are not used to being out there, and um, we just didn't find it. You know, and uh, you know, we've been uh, pretty good on the road, uh, but tonight was definitely not our night. 
Are there certain things that you're looking for aside from LeBron initiating on offense that either didn't come tonight and that you think still need to come along, especially if AD's out? No, for sure. We have plenty of firepower uh, to win this basketball game tonight. Um, you know, I got to do a better job putting guys in the right spots uh, to be successful and, and to use our depth, you know. Um, but we just didn't get going in that second half. No. Hey, Frank, um, you know, you go back 24 hours and you guys had this, you know, great spirited fourth quarter in a, in a close game where you were able to really summon something late. Um, how, just how do you account for uh, the same team 24 hours later, you know, not being able to kind of get drawn on the same thing? That's the NBA. I mean, that, that happens. Um, you know, we were different tonight than last night, obviously, with uh, you know, the guys we had in there. Um, you know, but you know, one night's different than the next, and there's different energy in every game. Um, I thought we, we started the game with good energy, but, you know, down the stretch, we just, we just lost with them. Dave? Frank, you thought your team would be a little edgy, uh, a little angry about what occurred in Philadelphia. Um, how do you respond to this one? Uh, you, you set out to we'll not lose two. Yeah. We have nights like this in a, in a long season. You know, we'll be fine. We'll bounce back. Um, you know, not happy. None of us are happy with how we played tonight. Uh, but we'll bounce back. Dan? Frank, um, you, you talked a lot about how you guys are going to get everybody's best shot a, a lot of times this season. Um, did you see that from Detroit? It seemed like they were they were really physically invested in the game, talking a lot and stuff like that. Um, did you feel like they were at a different intensity level maybe than you guys were? Um yeah, I thought our intensity, I don't think it was an intensity thing. I think it was more of an execution thing, you know. And then, um, like I said, the second half when, you know, when the shot's not, not falling, you don't have a rhythm in your offense. Um, you know, your focus wanes. And, um, you know, you do credit Detroit. Detroit played a good basketball game. Um, you know, but certainly this is a game we should win. Last question, Kyle. Frank, um, you guys had a pretty good record, um, you know, in games where, AD didn't play or LeBron didn't play last year. I'm thinking of an OKC game where Kuz and Rondo kind of led you guys to a big win there. Um, do you feel like that part of your culture is still intact or with the new group, do you feel like that will require just kind of building back or, or, or do these things even carry over year to year? I do. We, we have a team that can uh, can make up for, uh, uh, you know, a couple guys being out. And, um, you know, I think we'll be that way throughout the course of the year. But uh, you know, tonight, you know, like I said, you know, sometimes you just have some nights where you're off in a lot of ways. And uh, that was us tonight. Thank you, Frank. All right, that is Frank Vogel. We now have our Laker insider, Mike Bresnahan, joining us. Uh, what do you got for us, Bres? What are your well, takeaways? I know you guys talked a little bit about uh, Kyle Kuzma, but he's always so much more different when he's in the game as a starter. So when, he, when you hear he's going to start, I believe I stood here about three hours ago and said, guys, I have an announcement. Kyle Kuzma is going to have a big game. It's not that unpredictable because for whatever reason, he is just better, better Excuse me, <clears throat> in that starting lineup. Now, tonight, uh, he came into the game not really doing too well in the scoring column the last four games, averaging only four points. Tonight, you see the numbers there. This is indicative of what you get from Kuz. Kind of a new thing for him, the rebounding thing. And to his credit, he had not been having a good run in the scoring column coming into this game, but he'd been rebounding. He'd been blocking shots. He had that big one on uh, Jared Allen in Cleveland the other day. But tonight, he needed to ratchet up the scoring, and to his credit, he did. He was hitting threes, uh, not afraid to take it uh, to the rack. Pretty nice little footwork right there. James is a man of yeah. uh, renowned footwork. He'd probably be pretty pleased with that. I love it. So Kuz, this is not his fault. You know, this is not his fault. I know Rob is, is about to say I'm on the Kuz bus, and definitely that's the case, but I thought he had a pretty good game tonight. Brez. Four shots last night. 17 shots tonight. Yeah, so there's just a big, there's a big difference. It's a difference, and I'm not uh, gonna, you know, I'm not gonna push for him <laughs> to be a starter on this team. You know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, he obviously took the place of a pretty good player in AD. That's a pretty good starting five. It's just, I don't know if it's his mindset. You know, Rob, I know you started plenty of games in your uh, NBA career. It, is it different coming off the bench for, versus, hey, I'm gonna get the start. I want to show what I can do. Well, the difference is, a career half for me came when Clyde Drexler didn't play the game. So that means you get more shots. Right. It's a big difference. You get so, a better, so my you notes can, were useful. Yeah, you get a better rhythm. Well, that's, that's what people understand. Because if you look at Kuz last year, Kuz had more plays ran for him. This year, not so much. 
So he's being more active, and that's why he's going to the boards because he knows he doesn't have any plays. So how do you score? You get rebounds and you be active in that sense. So he's, he's learning. But when he does get plays, he does get some buckets. We were talking about this on one of our non-game nine night uh, shows the other night. Like, are, are you happy with his maturity just in how he's handled that and oh. like understanding what it takes to be on a winning team? And, and you had to do it so many times. It means less shots. It means a role change. You know, the thing about it is you, you have to be so proud of this guy because for a couple of years there, we was talking about him being the third wheel, mm -hmm. the third man. He's going to have to go ahead and do all this yeah. scoring. But... And I think he put that pressure on himself to be that guy. But now, you know what? He has a championship. He's sitting back and says, hey, my role was to just play basketball. Mm -hmm. Take what's given to me. And that's what you have to admire about him because now he's not searching for shots. He's getting shots, quality shots, not quantity shots, yeah. but quality shots. He's moving. He's cutting. He's playing free. And to me, he's like he's enjoying the game because his passes are nice i mean he's throwing some passes that look like magic so I, i'm very <laughs> impressed with him mm -hmm. yeah it's so versatile right james i mean just, just yeah. not to interrupt but he had the six offensive rebounds a couple games ago and he doesn't have to score every night but when he needs to he does the one thing that i've noticed in coos is regardless of what he's doing regard like he had a minus 16 tonight i, I don't wow. i didn't see that wow that's i did me. not see that at all because his effort is extraordinary. You don't see him uh, scoring all the time, but you always see him, you know, getting through picks, fighting over picks, you know, going to try to block shots, making that extra effort. His energy is, is consistent every night, regardless of what he's doing in the scoring column. So uh, he's, he's taking it to another level, even though they, you know, they lost the game. Kuz had a, a, a really good game tonight. He's asked to do a lot, mm -hmm. come off the bench, play for a rebound. And he's doing it, and so I, 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 my hat is off to him, man. The way he's, uh, the way he's upped his ante a little bit. Led the Lakers in rebounding and uh, had a double double. Let's go to break. Next up on Lakers, I was yeah. throwing out there, right? With 14 points, didn't score for seven minutes. Yeah, tough one. Yeah, LeBron 0 for 4 in the quarter. Mm -hmm. It's rare to see him go scoreless. He played 10 minutes too. It's not like he just jumped in in the last few minutes. So that that's an unusual thing for him. I want to talk a little bit about uh, KCP. Now two games in a row where he's kind of uh, really been pretty silent. Uh, he had three points the other night. They were big points, about a minute left in last night's game in Philly. Kind of brought the Lakers within one, but it, that was his only yeah. made shot of the entire game. Similar situation tonight. He scored six points. I'd argue that unlike Kuzma, who when Kuzma's not scoring, he's engaged lately. He's, he's getting the rebounds. He's playing some defense. Kuz, or, uh, KCP tonight, not much to show. Uh, he had an assist, I think a rebound. He's just uh, kind of in one of those mini slumps. It's only been two games. You know, you can't uh, knock him. Just last week, we were singing his praises when he made seven for 10 from three-point range against Milwaukee. A huge part of that win, which is kind of a kind of a mini slump. He, he needs to visit Rob Snow. Happy Rob Snow in the cold, <laughs> chilly weather. Was he seven weather. for 10 in Milwaukee, Bryce? <laughs> yeah, wasn't Since he? Since then, he was one for three, yeah. one for eight, one for two. Checking the notes again. Yeah, I like that. Not a lot of good stats. All right. He's got to find a way. Um, you know, it's, it's not because of lack of minutes. Um, you know, some people might say AD out of the game, but AD's been playing yeah. in those previous games. Uh, you can tell he was just a little frustrated tonight. Uh, he's got to find a way. You know, it's a long road trip, like Rob said. You never know what's going on, um, you know, on a daily basis. But he's got to find a way back. Frank Vogel was right when he said you will have nights like this in the NBA. And if you watch mm -hmm. enough NBA basketball and follow enough teams, he's absolutely right. And this was one of those nights. All right, mm -hmm. we've got more to come after the break. We'll hear from general manager Rob Polinka to get his thoughts. The good news for the Lakers, a lot of depth on this team. And how important is that to have not just a, a quality starting five, but a strong, you know, one through 15 team more or less? Yeah, Mike, again, that was something that was really intentional as, as, as the front office was sort of, you know, coming up with our strategy for this team. You know, just come, having come out of the bubble experience where, you know, guys had to come and go a little bit and teams had quarantine issues. Um, we knew that this year with kind of the soft bubble that we're in where teams are traveling around that we wanted to have a deep team. And uh, I think on a night, if we're missing a couple good players, we'll still be amazingly competitive because I think Frank Vogel and others at the beginning felt like this was one of the you know deeper teams in recent history. And that was intentional for sure. Rob, if I know you like I do, you're always looking for ways to make yourself better, uh, you, you know, your people around you better, uh, the players better. 
The trade deadline is uh, still a couple months away, and of course the veterans buyout session after that typically. Do you see the team being active? Obviously the Lakers off to a great start, but there's always ways to tinker and maybe even improve, isn't there? You know, one of the things you're always doing in, in the front office is you're running scenarios just to be prepared. You know, it's I've, I've said at the beginning of the season, sometimes it feels like a, a grand chess game and you want to study the moves and study what other teams are doing. And so we're always doing um, doing that. But um, at the same time, you don't want to tinker or change something that's working extraordinarily well. And so we'll be mindful of that, too. Um, we do have one open roster spot right now that at some point in the season will pro- probably get use. We wanted to use the first you know, third to really see where the holes are or the needs are. Uh, but that's definitely a tool at some point that'll come into play. And, you know, then you were talking about the trade deadline, too. You, you, you never know what may come your way. And so we're, we're preparing in advance for that just to make sure we're doing all we can to defend the title. All right, uh, Brez, uh, your conversation with Rob Palinka talking about the, the new additions. Yeah, he's obviously very happy about what they've done. I mean, when you had a guy like Schroeder and Montrez, that's going to make your team better. You know, Marcus Gasol, he's not going to score 20 points and get 10 rebounds every night like he used to in Memphis. But what he does on the court with his poise, you can tell Rob Palinka really appreciates the, the new guys. And, and why not? I mean, this team has been really playing at a high level tonight, an obvious exception. I, I wonder, though, uh, and you heard him talk a little bit about the, the near future trade deadline, about two months away. And, of course, all the vets buyouts after that. He's not going to reveal, reveal his cards. Not even he knows what moves he's going to make. But I wonder if the Lakers maybe go after uh, another shot-blocking big man. Uh, you mentioned the stat earlier. Yep. They really had only one block shot till late in the game when it was yeah. irrelevant. Uh, I feel like maybe one more guy, one more big man down low. They saw that one open spot on the roster. Yeah, I think there's the one critique, at least from people, about the roster or, or a need for this Laker team, even though they were number one in defensive efficiency and they had the best record in the league up until uh, a couple nights ago, uh, is the fact that, they lost a little bit of length, and, and do they need a shot blocker, and can they get one later down the road? Well, it would be nice. You know, uh, shot blocker is a big part of their offense. You know, to be able to block a shot, keep it in play, mm-hmm. get going on the fast break, you know, it kind of altering shots. There were a lot of times last season uh, when players would drive into the paint, they wouldn't even take the shot. They would know that they were <laughs> shot blockers there. So uh, it would be something, you know, if they could find somebody that could come in and, and be consistent there, it can only help them. But the other player that I hope they can find, you know, a consistent offense for is Wes Matthews because he can shoot. Remember yeah. the one game he had the six mm-hmm. threes? They haven't found that rhythm for him yet. He yeah. sets picks and tries to step back quick. It's not quite developing yet. I'd like to see him get a little bit more consistent. I know he can do it. Uh, he's playing really hard, but he's a specialist at shooting. Uh, that can help as well. Well, we want to talk about previews to maybe NBA final if we look at last night's game yeah. we definitely need another big mm-hmm. because AD can handle him but he can't do it for 48 minutes I'm talking about Joel Embiid yeah mm-hmm. and we saw Marcus all just too slow to guard him so they need another big and Trez is too short yeah so if you want to have a preview to a finals that was a perfect preview to say we need another big, we saw, and we they need to in, find something. We saw it in Drummond too when Drummond well, exactly. was. Would, would, would someone be able to argue that and say Rob but last year in the playoffs, they rarely used their bigs. Last year in the playoffs, they rarely had a big they went up against. Yeah. You know, the only one they had was in Denver, and he's if not you're really. If Philly, it's a different story. It's not a truly a big. Yeah. And you think about it. Tell me one other big they played against in the playoffs. And actually, well, Dwight, whether, Dwight was effective against the yes, yeah. well, whether you Whether you use them or not, you, you, you need them for when you have Just to like use Dwight. them against And by the way, yeah. great in the regular season. Yeah. If we, didn't, if, if we didn't have the White last, year. last right. year, who didn't play a lot of minutes, if we didn't have the White to go up against Jokic, that would have been a problem. He helped would win that problem. series. There's no doubt. No and Frank doubt. Vogel, some nice moves. He put Mark Keith Morris in there in a couple of the uh, the playoff games to kind of mess with the other team. I think that was the Houston series. They were coming out with Robert Covington as their center. Yeah. Yes. He's all of, what, 6'7"? So, I mean, you're, you're right, Rob, when you say not a lot of brute force needed in the playoffs last season. That could change, especially if the Lakers <clears> get to the finals this season. Yeah, Rob and the staff have done an incredible job putting together this roster. And like you said, they're going to keep it close to the vest. Yeah. Maybe there's a move down the road. We shall see, but this team, pretty darn good. It's yeah. hard to go out and get better. Or it's, and, and, you know, it's, and it's not time to panic yet, but it's just if the, if the one yeah. thing that, that's obvious is, is the shot block. It's just something to make you go, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe just a little. Because other teams it. are aware of it. They're aware of it. They're going to the cup. They're not afraid. Uh, Detroit tonight, they had no worries about 
you know, a shot blocker being there. So who are some of the uh, names out there? Think about. Who are some of the names out there? Well, you know, our old friend JaVale McGee, he's yeah. now on a team with like tons of centers in Cleveland. You got Drummond, who's actually going to be a free agent. People yeah. expect him to be dealt. He has a giant price tag. Uh, they just traded for Jared Allen. I don't see him moving, but, you know, JaVale McGee might be a guy that gets a buyout. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if he's going to get traded. He'd be obviously a good fit for this team. We know what he can do. Yeah. All right, guys. Good stuff. More to come on Access. THT with 13 points off the bench. THT scored 13 points in 14 minutes. He's speaking with Mike in the media. Yeah, Tim, what did you think was the difference in that second half when it appeared you guys were struggling to get going? Uh, I feel like, you know, we just – we think shots weren't falling for us, uh, you know, and then we had some breakdowns on defense that, you know, caused them, you know, I feel like to get confidence and try to run. Mm -hmm. Hey, what When you're checking in these games, in this case, you, you're pretty effective right away. You're pretty efficient from three, able to get to the rim. What is it that you're trying to look to do, uh, in even if it's shorter minutes that you're getting? How are you? How are you still playing your game efficiently? Uh, you know, with you know basketball being how it is, I would kind of you know expect to come in every game and try to be like that. But you know, it's not going to be like that every game. So, uh, you know, my goal is to come in and do kind of what I did today. So, yeah, just anything that you know, help us win. How good? Hey, Talon. Uh, Frank told us early today that. Uh, you were going to get some minutes tonight uh, with AD out. How how does it affect your mindset when you know you're going to play a certain role or when you know that you're going to come in on a given night? Uh, I just try to stay, you know, ready throughout, you know, everything. Uh, not kind of knowing what role I'll play when the game starts is, you know, kind of hard. So just being able to stay ready and just come in and do what I know how to do is just, uh, you know, going to be good. Tweet, Lakers Chargers fan. James Worthy, you guys made this game worthwhile for me tonight. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Ori, thank James. You. Thanks for tuning in, man. We appreciate it. That's our, that's our goal, is to connect with the fans, even if it's not a great you know what? game. I'm with him. You two made my night, too. Get you. Especially the, you the man. Ice cold Randy Watson up there. <laughs> All right, we're going to break. We'll be back. Wait to hear from LeBron. I just like to be here when we have that game and James is in the studio. <laughs> I just like to watch James. Will you be at home watching that one? Of course. I yeah. gotta watch it at home. Yeah. Unless y'all want to invite me to the First studio. First kind of Saturday night ABC. Would you like to come? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Primetime game. I'll stay at home if you want to come in. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Do I get to say, get some of that Laker? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Boston Celtics, big game, James. Obviously, uh, you know, another powerhouse in the East. You've already played the Sixers. You've played the Bucks, and now you're playing the third best team. So we'll, we'll kind of see what the Lakers do. With yeah, this. yeah. You know, you're talking about Brooklyn, Milwaukee, now Philadelphia. You cannot forget about the Boston Celtics. They're well coached. They play well as a team. Uh, Tatum, explosive player, mm -hmm. good supporting cast. Uh, the Lakers will have their hands full as they try to get back on track in Boston. Yeah, yeah they just got Kemba Walker back uh, about a week ago. He had not played yet this season. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, let's not forget, Jalen Brown is kind of stepping it up another notch. Last year, he was already established as a very good player, averaged about 20 a game. He's up to about 27, 28. He's off to a very strong start. And they picked up uh, Tristan Thompson to play uh, center. Yes. Pretty good team. They lost Gordon Hayward. Might have been addition by subtraction. They look pretty good to me. This is maybe a game that the guys have circled, right, in terms of motivation. And, you know, you have a day off of rest. And then it's a primetime game. It's a game you know everyone's watching. Does that help? It helps a lot. And plus, you just came up with two losses. You definitely don't want to lose three in a row. And it's the Boston Celtics. You know, it's that <laughs> rival. It's going to be so much hype behind this game. They're going to talk about it. And this is a young squad. And in the back of the Lakers' mind, it's like, this is one of the best teams in the East. Yeah. Who knows? We might meet them Ooh. in the playoffs. So sure. we got to come out and establish this game early and let these young fellas know who we are. And AD will be back. So it's some exciting and, times. And, and the Celtics are aware that we just tied them for 17 championships. <laughs> They're aware, aren't they? Yeah. You expect an AD to play okay. for sure? Yeah, I, I would think so. Uh, he's got a couple days to, uh, to rest up. You know, of all the games I've covered, you guys have obviously played in them, but I've only talked about them or, or written about them. The Game 7 in 2010 against Boston was the most incredible game I went to. And I covered Kobe's 81, and I co covered Kobe's last game. And co when Kobe outscored Dallas through three quarters, that was pretty crazy, too. <laughs> But when, to see the Lakers beat the Celtics and to see the emotion that came out of that Game 7, not a well-played game, 83-79 to 79 was the final. Kobe struggled with his shot. 
But just being there in Staples Center, it's a feeling I won't forget. Everyone stood for the entire second half, even the people in the lower bowl. No deals to be done, no, no talks to be made, nothing. Just pure basketball. Yeah. Let's see who's better. It was, it was pretty awesome. Rob got cheated a little bit. Celtics weren't any good when you were a Laker. <laughs> nice. So one thing you didn't get to do. Yeah. What happened, Rob? I know, man. <laughs> you had to beat the, the Nets. You had to beat the Nets. <laughs> Sixers and the Pacers. Pacers. The Pacers. The Sixers. It's just... You know, you wanted that marquee matchup. I, I, I didn't get it. You didn't just, get it. I didn't get it. Oh, well. Is it All too right. late? It's time. It's yeah, time. Way too late. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's there. LeBron scored 20 points in the first half, but just two in the second half. He's now speaking with Mike <laughs> in the media. Hey, LeBron, I want to separate this question from tonight's game, but Coos was just talking about how you guys have been extra cautious uh, during the pandemic. You know, a, a, an outbreak can move a team from a top seed to a six, seven seed, something like that. And I just wondered, uh, as you get to the second, third, fourth, fifth city on a trip, does does that mental toll, does that accumulate? Does that get more difficult? How do you kind of keep the team on focus there throughout throughout this unique situation? Um, because it's still work to be done. I mean, we still, you know, as games we play, be work to be done. We got to continue to get better. And um, you can't really... Um, you know, get your mind into the grasp of uh, how many days you've been on the road or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, every team does it. Every team hits a, a long road trip. And, and professionals, you know, we got to keep our minds fresh, keep our bodies fresh as much as we can um, to go out there and uh, put together a complete 48-minute game or as close to 48 minutes. So, well, obviously, we haven't done it the last couple of games, um, and uh, we just got to be better on Saturday. Just basketball-wise, did you notice anything about that second half, the, the biggest thing that stood out? Uh, I mean, I think Detroit played extremely well tonight, and then we didn't play well. We didn't play well at all. Um, like our legs got to us a little bit on the second night, we're back to back. Um, so, um, you know, that was the result of it. Dan? Hey, LeBron. Um, you, you, me you mentioned the legs. I mean, you got off to such a hot start in this game. Is that kind of what you think turned for you tonight? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, you know, I think early on I got it going. Um, and then I, I, I still, at the end of the day, still got to get my teammates involved. Um, you know, even with my scoring early, um, you know, we, we didn't have uh, many, you know, assists and things of that nature. So I want to try to implement my guys, get my guys involved in the game. And um, I definitely missed some shots that, I'm, that I know I'm accustomed to making, but it had nothing to do with my legs. Oh. Um. Hey, Frank has talked a couple times about the depth of his team and how tricky it is to, to kind of find minutes for everybody who deserves them uh, and how it can kind of force some uh, maybe non-conventional lineups. Um, how much do you feel that? How much do you feel that you personally are, are still adjusting to some of the different groups out there? And and uh, where, where would you kind of like to be um, soon in, in the, that development? Uh, we're, I, I'm definitely, and we're definitely um, all adjusting um, to playing with different lineups, um, you know, and, and logging minutes with lineups that, you know, one game you might not log with or could be a few games in a row. So, you know, it's kind of learning on the fly, and I think we're all learning on the fly because of the lack of practice time. You know, um, you know, with this season, it's very difficult to kind of, you know, get those practice minutes on the floor and know what, what works and what does not work. Um, just very strange with that. Um, so, you know, our, our, a lot of our games are also just like, you know, big practices for us, too. We, we have to learn on the fly and coach is still learning different lineups and seeing what, what combinations work, what combinations don't work. And uh, myself, I'm out there playing with certain lineups, certain lineups I don't play with, certain lineups I do play with. So I log a lot of minutes with, you know, you know, guys that, you know, may not have logged with, uh, you know, in, in a couple games. But like I said, it's all a learning experience and all of us trying to figure it out. If, bro, how do you get comfortable and stay patient with that challenge or that circumstance of needing the games to be the practices because it, the reality of the schedule doesn't allow for actual practices? Um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Uh, Dan, I think you have a follow-up. Yeah, LeBron, um, you guys have Boston on Saturday, um, and that, that's kind of one of those rivalries in sports that transcends even the country. I, I, I guess, what's it like to be a part of something so big like Lakers-Celtics? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Just knowing the history, um, 
you know, Lakers Celtics across, um, uh, I mean, throughout the course of, uh, you know, this league and uh, what it means to, uh, what it means to this league, the history of this league, um, you know, and just seeing some of the biggest games, some of the biggest rivalries, some of the best players that ever played this game to be a part of this rivalry was a pretty cool thing, you know, just learning the history. It's not like I didn't personally grow up watching them. Um, obviously, I was, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit too young in the '80s. Um, you know, and then they had, you know, rekindled a little bit in, in the 2000, uh, late 2000s when, you know, Kobe and them guys were going against Casey and those guys. But, um, you know, it's just it's pretty cool. And right now it's different. Um, you, we, without the Boston fans um, and without the Laker faithful, it, it, it's not the same. It won't feel the same on Saturday. Um, it's going to feel great to play another game and play against a very good team, but it won't have that rivalry feel. Just you know, the fans are so much a part of that rivalry, if you could just imagine, you know, and just go back and watch those games, how, how key the fans were um, in all the battles over the course of, or over the course of the years. All right, we'll wrap with Rachel. Ron, when is it in the cycle of games and off days and stuff and a road trip that you feel the most tired? Because we talked a lot about uh, how short the off season was, how much energy it was going to take, and you get to the beginning of the season and there's kind of a burst of we're starting. But you're on a long road trip like this. When is it that you feel it? Is it right after games? Is it on the off days? Uh, I don't get tired. I don't feel tired. Um, you know, I get my sleep. I get my rest. But uh, I have a, a, a lot of energy. I don't really, I don't get tired. Um, and I don't, I don't even, my mindset never gets to a point where it's like, okay, this is a long road trip. I'm exhausted or I'm tired. Um, I don't, I don't even, I don't even think about that. You know, we have our games. I'm ready to go. When, when we're not playing, you know, I have an opportunity to rest and get my body back right, get my mind, re- my, my mind refreshed. But um, I don't get tired. What are you doing on this road trip since you can't go out to dinner and maybe hang with guys the way you normally would? What are you doing to keep yourself occupied? Uh, watching a couple shows on Netflix and on Showtime um, and drinking some wine. It's, 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 uh, it's perfect. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Watching some shows on Netflix, drinking wine. That sounds fantastic right now. Here's a look at the Lakers calendar. Saturday, the Celtics, it's on ABC. We will be here pre and post. Monday at the Hawks. And then they got.